stop a gift. <laughs> Ah, she has told him that. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. I <laughs> We're back again with another video. If you don't know us, first of all, please, I beg you, please subscribe. If you don't YouTube know channel. us, come on, go and sit down. <laughs> I go just para. Come on, my jiga. I go just de. Follow my lead. <laughs> I'm feeling na na na. I'm a ticking dynamite. Okay, guys, I'm Gift. Here's my best friend. Can you? <laughs> and we are back outside. <laughs> we are the KG oh. channel. <laughs> <laughs> so we're back again. Is it? It's the consistency for me. We promise you we'll be back. <laughs> so here we are back. Anyway, this this video is based on popular demand. So I'm going to like what I'm going to do now is when people are asking me questions about how. We got admitted to the university or like to the a university in the US. I will just send you the video link. Watch it. Help me add to my views. <laughs> Watch it, please. So um basically we are just going to talk through the process, not our own process. Pro we're going to include our process. We already have a video about it, but now we want to like give generalize it like more on how to get admitted to a university in the US because that's what I know about. I don't know I don't really know about other countries and continents or whatever. And let me issue a disclaimer because people love to they will take what you sound generalize it. <laughs> we are not saying that this is the only way to go about it. We are telling you what we know. Yeah. Thank you very much. <sighs> so um so how like for us you already know we sent an email to our graduate graduate advisor of the department so that's the first way we're going to start with now that's like sending what happens when you send an email to the graduate advisor of the department is that mm -hmm. you're trying to you're building a relationship with the person so now if you're an exceptional student by exceptional i don't mean just first class you can have two one you can be like a two two student but you have like experience so when you do that already you attach your cv and your transcript Whenever you're sending an email, attach your CV and transcript. Don't go and send 100 lines of email. I will not read it. <laughs> so, Neither would I. And these people are really busy. So I don't think they will read it either. But your CV and your transcript will already summarize all what you want to tell them. So just that email is just like an introduction. I'm gifts, I'm this and that. I finished from this. I want to do my uh, my graduate this and at your school. My, I've attached my CV and my transcript. Just like brief summary of yourself. Normally no more than two paragraphs. Two paragraphs of like six lines each. It's not like two paragraphs that you now deceive yourself. Not First ten. paragraph now be twenty lines. Second paragraph, yes, it's it's two paragraph now. You've worked there, you've worked you know, there. You don't, don't include your CV. Exactly. You don't include your CV inside the email. So I don't want to be like I'm just you people. <laughs> so, <laughs> wait. so that is one of the ways you can do it. Send an email to the graduate advisor. What happens is that the graduate advisor is not going to be the one to admit you because I get this question. We get this question a lot. No, the person did not admit us. We still have to apply to the university. We're just trying to show the great advisor where you are. Let them be aware that somebody is coming. Exactly. And one, one more thing. Sometimes you go online, ch checking the list of the you know faculty and staff in that department. You might not find a great advisor. At least just tell somebody that you can find the email. Exactly. They can be, might can direct be a you. Secretary exactly. It might be a secretary. Yeah. It might even be a professor. Exactly. In that department. They will direct you to the necessary in that office. department. Because again, we also get so many messages from LinkedIn. Twitter, Instagram, telling me that you want to apply to engineering. I don't know. I don't. I'm in German. I'm in German. I don't know. Especially in the University of Alabama here, the departments are independent. So I can't know what's going on in engineering. They have their own rules. They have what they need. I can only know what, like, I can only give you advice if you're coming to German, not even French. Because exactly. even French, their requirement is still different from ours. It is. So when you're asking people for advice or when you're sending emails to professors, don't just send emails to one professor that is in the University of Alabama. You have to go to the exact department. If your department is very diverse, like engineering, for example, that you have civil engineering, transport, you have to send it to the one that you are interested in working with. And if you don't know how to go about whatever school, in fact, first say the course you want to study, or if you don't have an idea, just go to any schools in the US first. Look first for of it. All. Then each school, now say, for example, University of Alabama graduate school, you put, I promise you, you, you put that on Chrome or any browser, <laughs> it will bring out the portal. Of when you go school, to and then you, they will tell you the programs they have exactly. and then you check the department and choose one it's not hard just search for it go to departments then you go to applications or go to admissions on applications you see application requirements 
they see, will show you. It's not that we're trying to be cocky, like you guys are there already, that's your mouth is sharp. No, we did all of these things by our on own. Our own. Like no extra now. So I'm like influence. You, know, you don't need to, you don't need um so yeah, bro coach. And this one, that one, um, institution of this one that they, they, they secured for secure admission abroad. No. For example, like first of all, when you're really showing these lazy traits, when you're in the when you're doing your graduate degree or whatever, you are terribly on your own. Like you do research. You do everything on your own. So why can't you just be the kind of research you will do? Searching for the university you want to attend is like the easiest of it. Or checking for admission exactly. requirements. Exactly. That's the easiest If you thing. really plan to go, if you are really determined, you, you shouldn't be asking be, somebody else that what me, I'm even busy. I'll be in school. Well, you know, maybe you really feel to. that I don't know. Yeah, you might need direction. Yeah. No, in some cases, there's some cases where you can even ask questions. That's when there's some cases that you're like, oh, you could, you could not have known this thing. Like you need to ask me because I'm in the department. But the university is like generally transparent. Like, they wouldn't, they wouldn't require your birth certificate <laughs> and hide it from the exactly. portal. No, because want to, what they need is what they put out they there. They want to deceive you exactly. Mm. Like I can promise you, don't first of all take the fear out. Oh, I can't do this on my own. It's the US. I can't. No, you can do it. You have everything you need. You have your CV, right? It's well tailored to suit your. To suit the admission that you're looking for you have your transcripts everything you have your like so what why are you why are you scared you can do this i challenge you <laughs> to do it by yourself <laughs> then so one of the ways is just sending an email but then you see apply now if you need application waiver you already know you can send an email to the again to the graduate advisor the secretary a professor in the department or the email that they provide yeah exactly you will like any any of those Three can work you would get directions on how to apply for application waiver then um what again what's the next thing what, what else what other questions do we get um yeah is recommendation about your recommendation letter what happens is a recommendation is supposed to be between the your recommender and the school it's not supposed to pass through you so well it depends on some cases where but you are never asked to upload a copy of your recommendation letter it doesn't work that way because you could have toyed with it or something it's supposed to be a honest review of this person the recommender is recommending that's you so most of the time in most cases that i've seen they will send the link when you are applying you know you provide the email address and some other information about your recommender and then they send the link to your recommender and the recommender goes through that link to provide a recommendation it is either they ask them to fill in you know type something in a box or tick some mm -hmm. options or upload you know a copy of the recommendation letter that they've prepared on the letterhead for their office or it could be a combination of two or all of this yeah it's and not it's, you having it in your hand yeah and using your hand to upload it it doesn't and work. it's it's advisable normally or maybe they even they may, they may not say this but like they will advise you to ask your professors from where you just finished from at least one for the professors from where you just finished like just they want to know your academic background like course. is this person a, should you accept this person if you will thrive know. exactly <laughs> that's just it so don't just say oh recommendation letter then go and carry your pastor your uncle and one businessman that don't even like you have to use at least one of your professors and most of them ask for they will ask for three so at least one professor and then so that people or two professors if like better you can even give them three professors yeah they'll be like oh wow that means you have a good relationship with your professors and that's like good because recommendation letters cement of purpose and then cv or transcripts those are like it's really important to like it's really important for admission for the admission process and another thing is statement of purpose now can i continue yeah. talking about recommendation letter I would really advise that you inform your recommenders early enough ah. and you're like telling them constantly checking up on them tell, because you know how we are in Nigeria Nigeria Nigerians <laughs> like to waste time like to put importance on them so let them know the importance of that because your recommender might forget and yeah. not most of the time the recommendation letter is usually not due until the deadline of the application but then you have, it's not it doesn't do you any harm when they submit it early mm -hmm. so constantly make sure that you are on them telling them yeah, to like, submit it fast on their neck. tell them before you start gathering any other things safe first inform your recommenders let them to start preparing already and then you go about the other things let them know yeah why and tell them your interest in case you're in, in, you know applying for a phd yeah. or anything tell them what you like to do so what you can would like to be send included. your cv to them send it to them so that they will know what to call not just 
tell them that ah, I know I've known her for 15 years. She's, yeah, a, she's a good girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> she what? stays out of trouble. It's not good girl. I'll give you a she can, can speak her mother language and English fluently. <laughs> I would be happy if you please admit her. No, no, yeah. That. Um, yeah, the statement of purpose basically, like at, the, at master's level, you well, you may not really you should put your best in what you're doing, but at mm-hmm. master's level, like they might see caught you some slack that mm, well, <laughs> you know, people are, still, people are still finding their way through life and all, and all that at that stage. But should I make sure that you write something tangible? You're not writing sense of purpose to say, Oh, I'm writing to your school because your school is the best in the US. I research is, is number one out of 100. All this is not happening, but that doesn't help you. Like you, what does coming to this department do for you? And so, how will your coming benefit the department? Exactly, members? and you as well. Like so, it's not about they are the first and the best. They are the premier university of the US. <laughs> so like, it has to state something tangible. Like oh, I'm, I want to be. For example, if you are like, if you are, if you are in the languages, you can say oh, maybe I want to be a translator. Your department has this wonderful tr- this program. I went through it. This course in the department handles translation, so it's going to make me this and that. I also saw that professor. This one of that department is a is one of the foremost translators of blah blah blah. I would love to work with her. Like you see Think now how it's exactly the professors it. you have or to, who you, you want have to work to with. Research. You can't just write something empty. Now it doesn't even have to be so bulky. so all these impossible things. <laughs> But make it tangible, even if it, even if it looks like you're yeah, being over ambitious. But make it tangible, make them know that oh, this one needs this education. <laughs> we need to accept this person. Tell it to your immediate mm-hmm. career goals and your long term career goals. Exactly. Most of the time, all these things we don't also know it when we are applying. So that's that's why we're giving you. This I'm not now. proud of my. <laughs> oh my my God. God. <laughs> Rubbish. The University of Alabama. Yeah, but they still accepted us. But I don't want you to like. But go it was that. good. Yeah, it was good. But I don't want you to go that low. Like, why can't you go high when there's like the corrections to be made? Um. I just make research for transcript. Research yeah, no, all these things. There's exactly. So Please, your university might ask for something else. No one says gift and chemi because it's so funny. Some people say, no, no, but this person said, this person is the only one that's going to accept it's you. It's not me. It's the school that accept you. Go and ask this school what they want. And some people saying, write it there. What yeah, you should exactly. be. Yeah, exactly. Some saying, but I, well, I watched one YouTube video that they said that this is how you should be. No, okay. better ask your professor if you are being very confused. Then and if you can make friends with maybe people one of the professors there, yeah. if I don't say you should just wake up in the middle of that. I just want to say, how are you doing, ma? <laughs> Hope you are doing very well, ma. That's what I'm saying. Like, engage them in meaningful conversations. Mm-hmm. Put your name in their faces. Because yeah, one way or the other, your, your application is going to pass through their table. Pack I don't know if it's your master's yeah, level. Exactly. It's Pack going to pass through their CV. So let them expect that, them. oh, this good person is coming. Mm-hmm. Then, um, official transcript. Now, for my own department, again, I don't know if it's everywhere in the US, they did not ask for, like, official transcript from the university yet. Just whatever you have will suffice at that point when you are processing your admission. So please, if you are going to process your admission right now, then I believe that you you, you already have your transcripts <laughs> waiting. Anyway. There is one thing that shows your, your academic reason from like 100 level to final year. One official document. Then the very, very official one that the school will send you. You don't have to bother about that one. It's later when you resume that you can send it. I think that's another question. When they grant you the admission. Yeah, when they grant you the admission, then you, you can work on that. And they will not now send you back home. That I uh, know, like they know that it's difficult in some countries to get your transcript, but just have something down, something that is like a collision of all your results from 100 level to 100 level. You can just scan it and compress it into one PDF document and upload that when they ask for the transcript. Then basically, your CV should contain your yeah, work experience that is relevant to that department you're applying to. So, for example, we now as we watch plates last semester. It's even it's only if there's space on my CV I can add it, but it's not relevant exactly. to anything. I'm not going to I'm not applying to a job as a kitchen staff or whatever. So just now, like we have a language school, we have been teaching German this and that. We got scholarship to Germany, like see all those things that, that are like, exactly relevant to to the masters yeah, in German that I want to apply to. So those are the things that you should add. And for example, if you want to cross to another department, and you for example, if if you did German for your bachelor's and for your masters, you want to do maybe international relations. And you worked with an international organization, you worked with all these UN, you, you know, you you already so have like experience, sense. exactly. So it would be sensible to just add all those experience that, uh, that are tailored to the new department you are crossing to. Instead of saying you want to cross to history, you want to cross international relations, but all the work you have been doing is in, like, is in, is in maybe Germany, it's not German, like, it's, it's not really, they, they may accept you, but they will first of all choose people that already finished from that department, mm-hmm. have enough experience in that department, for they now consider you that don't have anything. To offer to really offer and all of that, and the official test scores. Right now, I think there is a trend that for some departments they are not, you know, 
some official tests are not required like tofu ilts yeah. and then some of them you will see that they will put you in some categories that if you went the bachelor's or a degree in the in any u.s university or if you belong to one of these countries they will list the countries for you or if your the mode of instruction in your formal degree was in english yeah they might cut you some slack there but you must check you must confirm if they need it or not yeah. if they need it why won't you why 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 won't you add it why would you say and somebody why? told me as i don't even know if somebody told me that they don't need it now <laughs> but it's who is that person that is that person, that person, that person the one of the school <laughs> anything they need give it to them yeah. and please read between the lines read instructions carefully some of the english some of the grammar might be confusing if they say it's optional or is required know the difference please no <laughs> what if they say exactly. for example if they say gre is required but not compulsory or already put it that means if you submit your gre scores they will not push it away yeah and if they don't say it's required something like that that means people that submit their gre scores they will consider them before they consider you but if they say it's not required at all then if you like if you like submit gre score nobody will check it <laughs> So you have to know the differences between all these required, and they tell you optional. It's not requested, or there's yeah. this English. Eh, hey, there's one, one English that yeah. they say if I don't put it, it's not requested. Or yeah, something. it's not required. I think that's it. If they say it's not required, required requested, then, needed, optional, then, yeah. all of those things, you have to know what it means exactly what it means, so that your application will not be pushed down. They don't be like let us give people that have all these things so before we consider you. And most of the time, they will never get considered because too many, <laughs> too many people have applied to this school already. Then, yeah, back to this. If you want to apply for a graduate teaching assistant, I think it is important that you send an email first, not just for the admission. Ask them. Do you people have money? I would love to be a graduate teaching assistant. I want to know if this offer is available. Mm -hmm. You know you cannot fund yourself. As in, you cannot work dollars. for more than 20 hours when you are a student. You have to know if this is available before you apply to that school. I mean, if nobody's going to fund you. Because what? imagine, you've already spent, you want to spend like $20 on application fee. And you don't before know you the application fee. You. So be sure to know that. And then they will tell you if the slot is full, if it is competitive and everything. So yeah. you even know how to work harder on your application. And then some people also put it on their websites. They just go to the funding part, graduate study, then go to funding. You will see, they will tell you maybe we have scholarships, no graduate assistantships. Or we have great assistantship, no scholarship. Or, or we have just two great assistantship. Like there will, some people will list it out, out explicitly. So the one thing that annoys them, I realize, is that when it's ready, when the information is on their website, and you don't want to read it, you're not asking them questions like that. They'll be like, are you, are you ready to even study at all? All the information that you need is on this website. They're not asking me, should I, uh, do you have funding? They're like, well, you can see it on the website, we have funding. It's already giving you a minus, minus, minus. So study the website of the school you want to apply to extensively. Now the questions that they are now now there that are still important, you can now ask them. Yeah. Um, what else? I think that's basically everything. Then how we got our own cheap flight. So now you've already they've admitted you. You've gotten your visa. And while well, doing all of this, of course, I'm happy if you are you. a believer, you yeah, know of course, pray, add, add prepare, to your plan. Mm -hmm. So now you've gotten everything. You've gotten your visa. You now want to book your flight. How we did this was that. Normally, you know that when you're traveling to the US, if it, it was just go, not return. So if it's just like one way, if it's a one way ticket, it's about, it depends on when you apply and when you book it, flight boys like 300,000 per person, Naira, thereabouts. So it was that time of the year, we were ready to book. It was like December, you know, people are traveling and all of that. The flight was like 356 per person. So um, on what flight did we use? Oh, Emirates. So Emirates, they okay, said it's supposed to be very expensive. <laughs> yeah, which is supposed to be really expensive. So they said if you have miles, like you know, all these people that fly a lot, they have they help them to collect miles and one day you can just use your miles. If it's high enough, you can use it to book your flight ticket. Like and that's it. So they said if we have miles, like maybe three hundred and eighty thousand worth of miles, we're going to pay like maybe one seventy six no, we're going to pay like three hundred and something thousand, both of us together. If we have Joint like three hundred and something thousand plus miles. I think. No, no, no. What happened if you had seventy five? It was just seventy five. Seventy five eh, thousand miles. Are you sure? I'm extreme. I'm. I'm. You may. Are you sure that? I'm super if sure. You had if you had seventy five thousand miles, you pay two fifty thousand naira. Yeah, both of us like together. Something that we yes. supposed to pay three hundred and fifty six thousand yeah. naira thereabouts. So two fifty thousand plus seventy five thousand miles. Yeah, exactly. So 
one of our friends I, like i just remember that one of my friends they travel a lot and that travels a lot and all of that and of course you need somebody that is kind i'm not saying this is a general rule if you have lots of power i know some of you have like uncles that like you and they travel and they're trying for to, help exactly they're trying to see they, 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 they cannot be your school fees and all these things so the little thing that they can offer you like just ask oh you travel a lot uncle do you have this do you know if you have my most of them when they travel a lot they may not know maybe the agent that they are, that is always booking for them that that, that help them to register their accounts to know about all these things Person, the person, the person might be like, "Mama, stress me like this, is stressful. I can't do this." Say, give me the person's number that is always booking a flight for you. There's just a way you can always get with this thing. Then the way people, and then we ended up paying like two fifty thousand, both of us, to come to the US. And God was, it's just part of God's blessings. To I us know because we had that friend. Like Seven thousand. Had yeah. she asked that dad, and dad had never met us. Yeah, he didn't know us, mm -hmm. and it was so kind. And it, it's just, I just him at this well. time to say that. Yeah, thank God you, God bless you, God bless your family, <laughs> and to these our wonderful friends. Yeah, because it's useful to them. I mean, if they, if they wanted to travel as well, they might have just paid nothing to travel. Yeah, they had that amount of miles like so high and all of that, but they gave us the miles, and then we use like just chicken change to travel. So that's just. Advice. And did you know that we booked this flight even before I went for my visa interview? Yeah, did you so know? They, Fate moves. <laughs> Did you know that we shopped for everything? And please always prepare for the weather. It's very important. If you are going to ask questions, yeah, uh -huh, now that's yeah, what you can ask. Like ask. Please, that was the cold. That was this weather. This yeah, food, what should I buy? everything. What do you think you can bring along? Before you go and see us opening body, you think <laughs> that, oh, it's open <laughs> body. And you come in the winter, of course. I mean, that's general knowledge, yeah. anyways. So, that. That's it. That's all. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any more questions about application, comment down below. Yeah, <laughs> comment down below as a celebrity. <laughs> so we're ready to answer your questions. <laughs> if it requires a video, we do a video. If it's just something you can type, we'll do that. Thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Cheers. Bye.